very special daf today. Today's daf is Masech Tabab Mansiya, daf pay, hey, and we're beginning from daf pay, um, pay dollar Ahmed Bays. Um, okay, we're up to in the middle of the Ahmed over there, so I'm just gonna tell it to you from it's about like 15 lines, 10 lines from where the where the where the where the, where the lines get wide, okay. So this is where we're up to. We're talking about Rab Loza Barab Shimon, Rab Loza, the son of Rab Shimon ben Yechai. And uh, he, 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 uh, his wife left him, and then we were going to see she came back to him. Anyway, he was a big tzaddik. He was a policeman, and uh, and uh, he gave a lot of Jews. Uh, he informed on a lot of Jews and got a lot of Jews in trouble. But nevertheless, he was a big tzaddik and the son of Rab Shimon ben Yechai. So the Gemara says a fascinating thing. He have a panachi nafshe when he was dying. He's Rab Lazar Rab Shimon. Amalei the Devesi. He told his wife, "Yidanam the Rabbanon the Resiche alive will be ask to be shaper." I know the rabbis are going to be very upset because of what I done because I joined the Romans and tattletailed and against my fellow Jews. But I so therefore they're not going to allow you to bury me in a Jewish cemetery. So I gone and be ilisai v'loitid chalaminai. Take my dead body. And uh, leave it, and don't put it in the attic, and don't be afraid. Don't worry, I'm not going to decompose. That's a fantastic thing. Amar Rav Shmuel Bar Nachmeini, Rav Shmuel Bar Nachmeini said, Ishtaylei imeid Rav Yonison. The mother of Rav Yonison spoke to me, spoke to me that she, the Ishtaylei the vice of Rav Lozer Bar Shimon, that she had a conversation with the wife of Rav Lozer Bar Shimon. So basically, Rav Shmuel Bar Nachmeini heard this uh, almost firsthand. That how many years was Rabbi Elazar Rab Shimon Ben Yechoi's body uh, not buried in the attic? And I'm sure, by the way, everybody has visited Rabbi Elazar Rab Shimon's uh, grave. He's actually buried next to Rab Shimon Ben Yechoi. So he's the Gemara says like Pachas Mitmani Sari was not less than 18 years. Like in not more than 22 years. Somewhere between 18 and 22 years, his body was remained in an attic. And it didn't decompose. Agnise be ilasish. He remained in the attic. Ki have a salikna when his wife would go up to check on how he's doing. Ma'ayne le bimazish. She would look at his hair, because ki have mishtamta binase mine. When one hair would pour out, have also dami blood would come out. In other words, his body was so fresh as if it just died. Yoy mechad. One day she's observing the body. Chaz de richashe de konofik meune. She saw a something like a something crawling out of his ear. She got very nervous because she thought that now he's going to decompose and she doesn't know what to do with it, with the body. So Rabbi Lozab Rabbi Shimon appeared to his wife in a dream. And she said and she said to me, he said to me, and this is the wife talking, don't be concerned about that. That I heard an insult against a, another Talmud Chacham. And I didn't, uh, I didn't protest as I should have. So therefore, that's why that worm came out of my ear. But there's nothing else is going to happen, says the Gemara. Kihavi, what did he do in the attic? Kihavi also by Treladina. When two people would come for a din tyra, have a above They would stay outside the door. Remember, he's dead on the inside. But they may have known about it. But they felt they could ask him to paskin. Amar Milsev, Amar Milsev. Each one said their peace he would he would release his psaka locha and said you are guilty and you are innocent so so therefore that's what he did he was paskini shilas there yamachad one day have a kominsa the bisi bahadi shabafta his wife rablaz shimon's wife got into a disagreement with a neighbor Amr Allah, so she said to her, take a balash and eat in the kvura. What should happen to you, what happened to your husband should happen to you, that you should not be buried also. Uh, Amr Rabbanan, Rabbanan said, Kula hai arach ara. that's you know, not, not to, to leave him not buried for so long is not appropriate. Already it's becoming part of the conversation. It's something not to be talked about. Now it's being spoken on the street, so they decided they're going to figure out how to bury him. Ik the Amri, others say Rab Shimon Bichai is Chazali Bichalma. Amalahu pray the Haachas Yeshli Benechem Biyata Roitzim Alav Yatsli. Somehow Rab Shimon Ben Yechoi appeared to the rabbis in a dream, and he said, "I have a uh, uh, pray the Haachas. I guess one one animal, one special uh, uh, young young animal fowl that's amongst you, and you don't want him to come to me. Bury him next to me." Also Rabbanin Lasuke Bay. 
the rabbis wanted to uh, got busy burying Rabbi Lozab Rabbi Shimon. So, uh, so Loi Shafke Bnei Achburaya. The people of Bnei Achburaya, where Rabbi Lozab Rabbi Shimon lived, did not allow it. The Chol Shoni to have a name. Rabbi Lozab Rabbi Shimon be Loi Leisak Lechayir Lemaraol Lemasayhu. As long as Rabbi Lozab Rabbi Shimon was dead in the attic, then a wild animal did not uh, kill anybody in the city. So they felt protected that they had the body of Rabbi Lozab Rabbi Shimon. One day, Malish Yom Edir Kapurah Hamah was Erev Yom Kippur. Have a three day. They were very busy. Shtarei Abon LeBnei Biri Vaskuk LaArase. So everybody was busy, and while nobody was look, looking, they stole the body. The, the, the rabbis told the Bnei Biri to grab him, take him out on a bed, Bam Tuye, and bring him LeMarasa Devia to to the cave of Rabbi Shimon Ben Yechai. Ashkech to, to the to the where Rabbi Shimon Ben Yisroi is buried. So they brought the body there, but they couldn't get into the to the cave. Ashkechul Achnu the Hadrulei Lemarasa. They saw a snake that uh, that was surrounding the cave. Amrulei. So they say this snake. Achna Achna Pischa Picha Vikonas Bein Eitzelum Aviv Pasach Luhu. The snake snake. Open your mouth and let the sun come come. To next to his father, he buried in his father. So he opened up, I guess, his mouth and uh, basically got away from the entrance of the cave. And he allowed them to come into the cave and bury the son of Rabbi Lozab Rab Shimon. Says the Gemara. So now Rabbi Lozab Rab Shimon died and he had a nice wife. So Shalach Rabbi Ladaba Beishri, Rabbeinu Akadish, Rabbi Huda Nasi wanted to marry the wife. So she sent back to him. I can't marry you. The, the, I was used by a holy person. I now should be used by a, a, a non-holy person. Compared to my first husband, you're non-holy. Taman Amri, they say over there, in the, in, over there, they say a marshal that a peg, that the, the, the strong person would hang up his weapons. This, uh, this, uh, this uh, this uh, shepherd hangs his uh, purse there. It doesn't make sense. It's not the right uh, place for you. So Rebbe still wanted to court her. So he said, Shalach law, I'm not as bad as, I'm not as, I'm not so different than your husband. Ni, the Batara Godel Memenu, I agree. In Torah, he was greater than me. Avobamaisim Toivim, me Godel Memenu. In great actions, was he greater than me? In other words, what's Maisim Tovim? Maisim Tovim is not mitzvahs here. Maisim Tovim means that uh, did he accept suffering? Did he did he accept suffering with uh, with uh, with love? And Rebbe, who suffered all his life, felt that he was greater than Rabbi Lozab Rabbi Shimon. So she sent back. I don't know who's greater than who in Torah. The Maisim, but accepting suffering, Yadana. Every night, as we learned yesterday, Rabbi Lozab Rabbi Shimon accepted him upon himself tremendous suffering that he was bleeding all night uh, and pus would come out of his body all, all uh, throughout the night. So the Gemara said, well, how did Rebbe know, how did Rebbe think that Rabbi Lozab Rabbi Shimon was greater than him in Torah? But Torah Mahi, the Chiyav Yasur of Rabbi Shimon, Galiyav Shub Ben Karcha Asaf Slay, when they would sit on the chairs, Yasur Kameh Rabbi Lozab Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Aara. Rebbe would sit and Rabbi Lozab Shimon would sit on the ground. So Makshu uh, Mufarkin, they would ask him questions. So Rebbe and Rabbi Lozab Rabbi Shimon were classmates, but they would sit on the floor in the in the classroom. Amre, so the, the rabbi said, they ask us such good questions and we're drinking from their knowledge and we let them sit on the floor. They made special benches so that they can sit on a chair and a bench and be part of the class. But Amalahan Rab Shimon Megabliya, Rab Shimon Megabliya said, who was one of the rabbis, and he was the father of Rabbi Huda Nasi, pray the Achas Yeshli Bechem, Ashli Benechem. I have one special son uh, who's in, in the classroom, Rabbeinu Akadish. The Atem Evakshim La Abdemimene, you want him to be lost from me? By putting him on a chair, uh, uh, there's possibility that there'll be uh, an Ayn Hara, maybe from other classmates. So Achtuhu the Rebbe. So they made Rebbe sit back up down on the floor. In other words, Rebbe Shuban Karcha said, "Let's put Rebbe Lozab Rebbe Shimon back on the floor." Also, now why? Because you know Rebbe Lozab Rebbe Shimon's father passed away, and nobody is concerned that Rebbe Lozab Rebbe Shimon is going to get an Ayn Hara. 
uh, just like the father of Rabbeinu HaKadosh, Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, was concerned that his son Rabbi Yehuda Anasi was going to get an Ayin Har. That's why they, they made Rabbi Yehuda Anasi sit back down on the floor. So, Achtuhu Nami, Rabbi Shimon, on the advice of Yeshua Ben Karcha, they made Rabbi Lozab Rabbi Shimon sit back down on the floor. Chalash Daite, he felt very bad. Rabbi Lozab Rabbi Shimon thought that, you know, they're not, that that he's he's on a higher level than Rabbeinu HaKadosh. Alma, he said, Kachashivis Lake Kavasi, are the, are the rabbis considering me an equal to Rabbi Huda Nasi? Adahu Yama until that day, Kava Alma Rabbi Milsa when Rabbi would say something, have Messiah laid Rabbi Lazar Mashimim. Mashimim would prove that Rabbi was correct because uh, Rabbi Lazar Mashimim wanted to be nice to Rabbi. The Kaba Elah from this time on, he, Rabbi Lazar Mashimim had this mindset that he wanted to prove that he is a greater Talmud Chachin than Rabbi. <coughs> Pardon me. He have Alma Rabbi when Rabbi would say, Yesh li Lahashiv, I have something to say. Amalei Rab Lazar Rab Shimon. Rab Lazar Rab Shimon says, "Kach v'kach yesh lechashev zuhi chivuascha." Then Rab Lazar Rab Shimon says, "This is what what you can answer," and and I'm refuting what you could possibly answer. In other words, Rab Lazar Rab Shimon was uh, was uh, uh, was refuting the answer to the question Rab Lazar Rab Shimon asked. Rabbi answered. Rab Lazar Rab Shimon refuted Rabbi. Now that you answer me, Chuvas surrounded me with answers, uh, bundles of answers that have no substance to it. So basically, Rabbi Lazar Shimon insulted the, 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 the learning power of Rabbi Nehakadosh, Rabbi. Chalash died to Rabbi, Rabbi felt bad. So he came and told his father the insult that Rabbi Lazar Shimon said to him. And he wanted to know, is Rabbi Lazar Shimon greater in learning than he is? Amalei, so Rabbi Shimon Gamliel said, "Bini al yerulacha, don't feel so bad. Shu Ari Ben Ari, he's a lion, the son of a lion. In other words, his father, Rabbi Shimon Yichai, is a great person, so he's a great person, and therefore, Baata Ari, you are a, a, a lion, but Ben Shul, the son of a fox. In other words, I am your father, Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamliel, and therefore, it's because of me, you're not as strong in learning as he is." I knew the Rebbe, but Rebbe didn't agree with that assessment of his father. That his father felt that he was not as a he was a fox, not a lion. Rebbe said, There are three major humble people in the world that came to planet Earth. Abba, my father is a very humble person. We go to Peheyam and Al, the sons of Besera, Yenisim and Shaul, Yenisim and Shaul. These three people were the most humblest uh, people of all time, uh, besides Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm sure. <laughs> Rab Shimon Megaliel had Amram. We said the story of Shimon Megaliel uh, felt that he was not such a good learner, not such a good learner, and therefore, <laughs> and therefore he was a humble person. Bnei Beseira, who are the why are the Bnei Beseira humble? The Amramar Hashivu Bereish Uminuhu Lenasi Alehem. When Bnei Beseira were 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 the presidents. And uh, they were the presidents of Kalal Yisrael. And then all of a sudden, they, a big question came about, and Hillel answered the question. So they realized the Hillel, Hillel is, uh, is, is greater than them in learning. So they resigned from their post as presidents, and they made Hillel the presidents. Now, how about that? So therefore, it takes a humble person to do that, uh, to realize that there's somebody greater than you and more worthy than you for the job. So the B'nai B'seira get credit to being very humble people. Yonis ben Shaul, how do we know Yonis ben Shaul was the Kamale David? He said to David, You're going to take over kingdom, even though my father Shaul Hamelech, and really I'm supposed to be the king. But it seems to me that uh, the people, that it seems to me that you're more worthy of, of being a king than I am. So it takes a humble person to realize that uh, where he's at, and that perhaps somebody is greater than him uh, that's more worthy for the job. Says the Gemara Mimai, how do you know that the reason why Yanis ben Shol is, is so humble, and that's why he gave the job to David Amalek to take over as king? Dilma Yanis ben Shol, the Chaz Degori, Alma Basa David. He saw that that the, the populace was going towards David Amalek, not towards him. And therefore, he gave up the job to him. It's Lahavdal, but it's similar to when the uh, early, early, the sixth Lubavitcher Rebbe passed away, he had two son-in-laws, one, I think, Rabbi Gurari, and the other one, the, 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 the last Lubavitcher Rebbe, and uh, he was younger. And uh, the people just were drawn to the younger uh, son-in-law as opposed to the older son-in-law, and that's why he ended up taking over the job uh, as the seventh Rebbe. So maybe that's why Yonason ben Shol, he, he he's not a humble person. He just recognized that the people were voting with David Amalek as, as opposed to him. 
It doesn't show humility. It's that they saw that Hill will be stronger, uh, smarter than them, and therefore, and therefore more worthy for the job. But that's not uh, humility. Shimon was for sure a humble person. Now the Gemara discusses something uh, important about suffering. Uh, and it's good, good to, it's a fa fabulous Gemara. Amar Rebbe, Rebbe said, Chavivin Yisurim. Yisurim, suffering is a beloved thing. It makes a person stronger and a better, brings out the best in a person. Kabul alai tleisashani. So Rebbe accepted upon himself of 12 years of suffering. Shish bitsimirosoi, ushva bitsavarna. Six with a gold, you know, like a gallstone, and the seventh with a something, a sickness in his mouth. And it's called uh, a sickness in the mouth. That's Svarna. Bamila Shiva Bitsmirsa Vishish Bitsvarna. And some said he had suffered seven years with this Tsmirsa disease, which is again a stone when you urinate, Ushish Bitsafarna, and six with the uh, with uh, with the sickness in the mouth. So the Gemara says that this stone caused, by the way, when Rebbe would urinate, it would cause him such such pain that he would scream and his sound would be heard for miles and miles around. The Gemara says, the, the, the one that took care of the horses of Rebbe no Kaddish was rich from the Persian king. When he would feed his horses, uh, the, the sound of the horses being fed, their sounds would be heard for three miles. Rebbe went to the, to the bathroom at, at a certain time, so he made sure that the horses would make noise to block out the sounds of the screams that Rebbe had when he was going to the bathroom. Despite trying to drown the sounds of Rebbe, Rebbe's voice was heard above the above and beyond the sound of the horses. And they heard it on the other side of the river. In other words, Rebbe would scream so much from the pain of having these stones where he urinates, and therefore, uh, uh, even in trying to drown out the sound, didn't work. So even though Rabbi Noah suffered a lot, uh, physical suffering, says the Gemara of Afilahachi, despite the, what we just said, Yisurim the Rabbi Lazar Mishim had from the Rabbi, the Yisurim of well, the suffering that Rabbi Lazar Mishim had was even worse than Rabbi. This is Rabbi Lazar Mishim and Mahavabo Mahavahochel. He, it was brought out of love, and they went out of love. In other words, he brought it uh, upon himself, and he had total control when he would suffer. And this is called Yusurim Shelahav. It's not because of a punishment, but it's because to bring out the, the potential of the person. The Rebbe, Rebbe, the reason why he suffered was because he was punished. It, it became because of because uh, he did something wrong, and it left because he did something good. I they might say, well, what the, the it came because Rebbe did something good. Mahi, what's the story? That who Egla, there was this calf. Okay, imagine a baby cow. They were going to slaughter it. So it, it, it ran away from the slaughterhouse and it came under the coat of Rebbe. It was hiding from the from the from the shaykhid and under Rebbe's coat. The kabachi, and it, it's unbelievable, but it, it was crying. Uh, the cow was crying. So Rebbe said, Zil, you have to go allow yourself to be slaughtered. That was why you were created, to feed people. Amros, in the heavens, they said, since he has no mercy on animals, let's bring suffering upon Rebbe. So there, there Rebbe got punished for not showing compassion to an animal who was crying. They maisa holchu, and because of a story, it left. Yoimechad have a kokanche amse de Rebbe base it. The the maid servant of Rebbe was sweeping the house. Have a dibene kakushta. There was a, a group of uh, of mouse uh, um, mice there. The kokanche she wanted to sweep it out of the house. Amala he said to her, Shafkinu, leave it. Siv rachma v'kol If God has mercy on all His creations, and even the you know these lowly creatures. Don't, you know, treat them with respect. Ah, oh, so once he showed compassion to a creature, they showed compassion to him. Amru, they said, Since he showed compassion to the creature, we're going to have uh, compassion on Rebbe. Says the Gemara, As long as Rebbe Lazar was suffering, nobody died uh, uh, young. 
In other words, without reaching old age. The Rebbe, when Rebbe was suffering, the world was protected because the whole world did not need rain. Having a rain is, you know, is like a is like a day of judgment. said, If the world did not need rain, I would just get away, get get rid of the concept of rain. Because having a rain brings out, you know, you know, uh, morose, uh, depression in a person, sadness in a person, and, and it blocks you from doing your plans. Says the Gemara, despite that it didn't rain as long as Rebbe was suffering. When you pluck out a radish and there was a hole, all of a sudden there was the water would, would fill up that hole. So the ground somehow was seemed saturated with water, despite the fact that it didn't rain. So now the Gemara now tells us a story that Rebbe was somebody into the Kirov world. Ikli Rebbe Lazar Rablazar Bashimin. A Rebbe came to the to the city of Rablazar Reb Shimon, and Rablazar Reb Shimon long passed away. Omalai Yesh Loi Ben Loi Sitzadik. He wanted to know did Reb Shalom Reb Shimon have a, a have a uh, son? Omalai. So they told him Yesh Loi Ben Rablazar Reb Shimon had a son. But Bechol Zoynish Neskeres Bishnayim Sechar to Bishmoyne. He was a very handsome person. So if you have a a a, a, a Zoyna. Right, a zaina that would normally hire her services out for two slayim, so she was, you know, in demand. She demanded to sleep with with the son of Rabbi Lazar Shimon because he was such a handsome person, and apparently he slept with a lot of zainas. Put it that way, so he wasn't. He was. Uh, he was in a bad shape. To so Asia, so Rebbe wanted to be makar of him. So the Gemara says Asia. He brought him out, and and without anything, Asmeche Berebi. He called him a Rebbe. So here he comes out from uh, from uh, from a den of znus, and he, right away the Rebbe made him a rabbi. And he made he made Rab Shimon ben Isi ben Lakonya to his the sister of his mother to uh, be his friend and to learn with him. So they Rab Shimon ben Isi started learning with the son of Rab Lazar Rab Shimon. And every day he would say, I want to go back to my city. I can't stand learning Torah. So Rebbe would try to convince him back. I made you a, I made you a chachem. The gulsa the hava parselach and a cloak of gold I spread over you. The Rebbe karilach. And I called you a, a Rebbe. So he, you see, I built you up. And you say, I want to go back to my city. In other words, you want to go back to your old ways. Uh, you know, you already have all these titles. Now you have to live up to the titles. Amale, he said, so the son of Rabbi Shimon said, Mumi, I agreed I was wrong. Azuva, da, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm not going back to my city and I'm going to focus on growing and learning. Kigadal, when he grew up, when he grew up, when he can grew into a big Talmud Chacham, also Yosem sifted the Rebbe. He sat in the in the the base medrash of Rebbe. Shama lekaylis. So Rebbe heard his sound in the in the classroom. Alma, he said, "How call it the make call it dami lekal the Rablazar Reb Shimon?" That sounds like the voice of Rablazar Reb Shimon. Amar Le, they told him, "Brehi, it's actually his son," and he made it all the way to your class. Kari Alei, so he read on. He called the pasuk Preet Sadik Eitz Chaim Vlekech Nach in the Farshish Chacham. Preet Tzadik Eitz Chaim Zer Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Lazar Ber Shimon. The 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 offspring, the fruit of a tzadik is a, is a live tree, which refers to Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Lazar Ber Shimon that uh, that turned into such a great person, a great Talmud Chacham. Velakeach Nafashes Chacham. Somebody who's smart is able to capture souls. It takes uh, somebody who's very smart to be into Kiriv. And uh, Zera and be successful at it. Zera Shimon ben Isi leben lekonya. That's referring to Rabbi Shimon ben Isi. That was the was the was the teacher of the son of Rabbi Lazar ben Shimon. Ki nach nafshe when when the son of Rabbi Lazar ben Shimon wanted it, when died. I'm tui lemarasa devia. They wanted to bring him into the cave of Rabbi Shimon ben Yichai. Have a achna lemarasa. There was a snake blocking the cave. Amale. So he said to them, achna achna. Okay, a snake, snake, psach, picha, v'yekonach bein, eitz lavev. Let the son go into his father. Loi psach lehu. So the snake did not want to let the, the son in. Now we can understand why, because of his his, his checkered past. Uh, that he was, uh, you know, he was in a, he's coming from a den of Zainus. 
Because the people thought that the reason why the snake did not want to let him in, that his father was greater than him. Then they heard a voice from heaven said, not because he was great in learning. In fact, Rab Lazar Rab Shimon was equal to his son in learning, despite his son having a late start. Rab Lazar Rab Shimon suffered in the, in the cave. And running away from the Romans with Rab Shimon ben Yechoi, and he did not have suffering in the caves. So therefore, they, the snake didn't want to let him in. Now the Gemara tells you a similar story. Ikla Rabbi Rabbi Asrei the Rab Tarfin. Rabbi came to the uh, the the place of Rab Tarfin. Rabbi wanted heard that Rab Tarfin had a son, and and maybe the, he wasn't going in the right path. And Rab Tarfin used to, you know, prove himself right by saying that if I'm if I'm not correct, then my son something should happen to my son. So Rebbe was concerned that something may have indeed happened to Rab Tarfin's son. Amrulai, so they told him Ben Enloi, Ben Bas Yeshloi. Rab Tarfin didn't leave over a son, but he has a grandson from a daughter. The Chol, and again he was a guy who hung around a den of Zainas. The Chol Zainas in his Keres Mishnayim Sukhar to Bishmoina. Even a Zoyna that would normally hire herself or her services out for two sloyim, she was so, you know, uh, smitten by him because of his handsomeness, she would hire himself out to, for eight that she he should have relations with her. Anyway, Asi the Kame, they brought this, this son of Raptarf, the grandson of Raptarf, before Rabbeinu Akadish. Amalei, so Rabbeinu Akadish said, If you're going to do tshuva, I'm going to give you my daughter as a as a as a as a as a wife. He did, uh, he did because of that. He did uh, he he did tshuva. Ika de Amri Nasfa, he actually married the daughter of Rabbeinu Akadish, Begirsha, and and he gave her a divorce. Ika Adma Loy Nasfa Klal, Kedai Shleim, which is the cause of that. He never married her, so he people shouldn't say that. Oh, the only reason why he did tshuva was to be Rabbi's son-in-law. So he 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 he, he avoided the shidduch. Says the Gemara. Why did Rebbe, who could have done other things with his with his with his time, why did he get involved in Kirov? That's sort of a waste of time. The Amar of Yudam Rav, Amilo Amar of Chiyabarab, Amar of Yechon, Amilo Amar of Shmuel, Banachmeni Amar of Yonison. The reason why Rebbe got involved into Kirov and teaching, because it says, "Kol Malam is Ben Chaver Torah Zoychav Yoshe B'Shivah Shemal." If you teach the son of your friend Torah, you merit to sit in the in the upstairs heaven next to God Himself. Tnema im Toshiv v'Ashivcha Lefnonai v'Ashivcha Lefonai Tami. If you call, if you turn around and cause other people to turn around, God says you'll stand right next to me. And the Torah in the Gemara it says, "V'Chol Hamalamid is Ben Amaritz Torah." If he teach the son of an Amaritz Torah, so he he doesn't have a father to teach him Torah. So you go out of your way and spend time and teaching somebody else Torah. Afila Kodesh Baruch Hu goes exera mevat lebeshvilai. Even if the Kodesh Baruch Hu would decree a bad decree, because of you, he's going to nullify. Shnema v'im toitzu yakom mezayla kafitzia kafitzia. If you take uh, something precious out of a glutton, in other words, you teach the son of an Amaritz Torah, kifisia, you'll be like the mouth of God. You whatever God says, you can you know say the other way. If you see a, a family who the father is a Talmud Chacham, the son is a Talmud Chacham, the grandson is a Talmud Chacham, then the Torah will always be in that family. So when when it when it goes in three generations, God says the Torah will stay in that family. I'm a guarantee. That Torah, you know, comes to where it's to the hotel that it's used to. In other words, if this family is a, a Talmud Chacham family, then even later generations, even if they lax off a bit, the, 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 somehow they'll they'll be into learning as well. Says the Gemara, Rav Yosef Yosef Arboin Talisa, Rav Yosef would fast forty fasts so that his children should learn Torah. Ba'akrinu leYumish bePicha. Yosef Abayim Tanisa Achrina by Yachrinu leYimish bePicha beYuzaracha. He fasted another forty fasts so that his grandchildren should learn Torah. Yosef may have Tanisa Achrina Asav Yekray leMish bePicha beYuzaracha the Olam. Then he said said another forty fasts. That's the Gersa, so that his great grand his grandchildren great grandchildren should also uh, be learning. Amma Makavei Lech Letzuyot Tzim Mechatoria Mechazenius Al Chasanya 
uh, uh, law. Now, so so he prayed for himself that he would learn. He prayed for his grand his kid to learn, and he paid for his grandchildren. Torah remained in that Rav Yosef family. Says the Gemara about fasting. Rav Yosef, Rav Zera, he saw the glory of Yisrael. Rav Zera would come to Eretz Yisrael. Yosef mea tanisa the l'shtakach gabar bavloi mine kehechad l'linitarde. Rav Zera, who learned learned in Bavel, when he came to Eretz Yisrael, he fasted a hundred fasts so he should forget some of the learning on the the style of learning of the Talmud Bavli, so he can learn Talmud Yishalmi. It's not easy to adjust from one style of learning to another style of learning. Yes, so he fasted a lot. He pray, he fasted another hundred fasts so that Rabbi Loza should not die in his lifetime, so that the responsibilities of the tziba would fall upon him. Apparently, Rabbi Zera was next in line to take over for Rabbi Loza, and therefore Rabbi Zera did not want that job because he wanted to continue in his learnings un, un, undisturbed. And he sat for another hundred fasts so that the fires of Gehenna will not uh, singe him. Says the Gemara, how did he know that the, he's not going to get burned in Gehenna? So the Gemara says a fascinating thing about Rab Zera. All, all 30 days, Rab, Rab, Rab Zera would check himself if he's going to be singed by fire. He would, uh, he would light a, 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 a oven, open the oven, and sit inside, and and see if he didn't get burnt. And he didn't get burnt. And the fire did not singe Rabbi Zera. Rabbi Zera. But one day he got an ein hara for one of the rabbis of Isharku Shake, and he he singed his foot, his 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 thigh. The Karele, and they called him Kotten. Rabzera the Midget, Chak Harik Shaki, has a burnt foot. And Rabzera was small. And, uh, and and he singed his feet, uh, trying this practice of walking into a fiery oven to test if he's going to burn in Gehenna. Um, I'm going to continue on. I don't, you know, whoever wants to stay can stay. I'm just, it's going to take another, I would say, another six, seven minutes till we finish the page. Uh, but it's, the Gemara continues on on this uh, on a, on a, another discussion over here. Fascinating Gemaras. Uh, it's all being recorded, so I'm going to post it later on. If whoever miss uh, whoever uh, needs to go, Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Rav. Rav Yehuda said in the name of Rav. Why does it say in the pasuk when the first base of Migdash was destroyed? The pasuk says in Yirmiyah, Mi Ha'isha Chacham Yavin Ezois Vasher Diber Pi Hashem Ela Begida Me of the Aretz. Who, who is smart and has wisdom and can understand what the words of God is, what's the opinion of God, to understand why did God destroy his land? It means what, what did the Jews do wrong in the first place in English? So, uh, so the Gemara says, Dovazet, this following thing, Amru Chachamu, up to Amit Beis, Pehei Amit Beis. Chamam said, like Pishu, they couldn't figure it out. Amru Neviim, the Neviim tried to say something, a reason, the Lai Pershu, and they didn't, they, the Lai Pershu, and they weren't successful in explaining it. And they had a shot, but probably it didn't explain it well. It didn't make sense. It didn't add up. Acha Pirsu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Ba'atzman, God himself explained why he destroyed uh, the land of Israel during the first destruction of the base of Migdash. Shanama, Vayoyim HaShem, Al Azmas Tarasi, Ashen Sati Lefnehem. They left the Torah that I gave before them. In other words, before them, they, they, before, what you're supposed to do before the Torah, which means make a blessing over the Torah and take a pause before you learn Torah uh, to see the value of what you're doing, they didn't do that. They just ran into learning. They didn't say Bircha Satira first. They just ran into learning without understanding why they're learning. And therefore, God said, okay, that's, they're showing no, no respect to the Torah. And that's the reason why the first, base, the first uh, land was destroyed. Amar Rav Chama, my Rav Chama said, "My dixiv, what does the pasuk say? Believe nafim tanua chachma of the keref kisilam tivada. In the hands, in the heart of a, a wise person, will rest wisdom, and in the midst, inside of a fool, tivada, it will be known that he's smart. What does that mean? Believe nafim tanua chachma, a tamad chacham ben tamad chacham, a tamad chacham, the son of a tamad chacham, is not such a big novelty." Well, the care of Kisilim Tibada will be more popular from a fool comes wisdom. Zer Talmud Chacham Ben Amaretz. Talmud Chacham coming from an Amaretz is a big thing. Uh, because because where did that come from? His father is an Amaretz, and how did he become a Talmud Chacham? But that happens. Ama Ula, Haim Nida People say, Asteir Beligna Kish Kish Karya. A coin 
in an empty vessel makes a lot of noise. So this this Tam Chacham coming from a family of Amaretz it is it makes a lot of noise. People are wondering about that. Amalei Rab Yirmiyah Rab Zera. Rab Yirmiyah said to Rab Zera, "I dixiv. What's the pasuk meaning? Katan v'gadol sham who evit chafshim adayinu." The the pasuk is describing in Eov who's going to be in Olam Haba. Katan, somebody who's small. V'gadol, somebody who's great, and and a, a slave that's free from his master. Ata don't I know lo yadin in the katan. The Gadol Shamhu, that will be a small person there and a great person in, in Olam Haba. I mean, obviously, all types of people are going to get to Olam Haba. Ella, what the Pasuk is referring to, is called Hamaktin Atzmel Divrei Torah Ba'olam a person who makes himself small on the words of Torah and Olam Azav, that recognizes that he doesn't understand everything. Nasa Gadol Olam Haba, in the, in, the, in, the, in the Olam Haba, he'll become great. He'll, he'll, his, his mind will expand to understand more. And if you make yourself like a slave on the words of Torah in this world, that you're going to follow it, even though it may not make perfect sense to you. Now, if you're going to become free in Olam Abba. In other words, you'll, 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 you, nothing will inhibit you in Olam Abba because you won't have these kinds of questions. Says the Gemara, Rishlakish Rish would mark off the graves of rabbis either because he didn't want Kahanim to walk over graves that are unmarked. They don't know. So probably in Israel, there are a lot of unmarked graves. You don't know. So he would try to mark off where rabbis would bury, were buried. Or maybe he marked off the graves so people can pray at the gravesite of rabbis. So that's what Rav Shlakish's job was. When he came to the grave of Rabchiah, he forgot where the grave is located. He got very, uh, felt bad. He couldn't find Rabchiah's grave burial site. Omar, he said, Didn't I engage in Torah, in the depths of Torah, like, like Rabchiah? Yatsa Baskal Baskal came out of Amrle and says, Tyra Kamaisa Kapipalta. You you learn Torah like Rabhia. In Rishlakish, you're great like Rabhia. But Tyra Kamaisa Lai Batsta. But Torah like him, you did not disseminate. In other words, Rab Shlakish didn't have that merit of disseminating Torah as Rabhia, and therefore they kept hidden from him the burial site of Rabhia. Says the Gemara, what where do you see that Rabhia was so involved in not in spreading Torah, when Rabchinina and Rabchia would have an argument, Rabchinina said to Rabchia, you're arguing with me? From my, uh, from my intellectual acumen, if Torah would ever be forgotten from the Jewish people, I will be able to get it back. Amalei Rabchil Rabchina Chachnina Rabchnia Set Rabchnina Bahadi Di commences. You're arguing with me. The Av the Torah the Leiti Shtachach Misrael. I can make sure that Torah will never be forgotten from the Jewish people. In other words, I could set up a yeshiva that the people who go to my yeshiva will never will learn Torah in such a way that they'll never forget it. How do you set up such a yeshiva? My Avidrei, what would I do? Azlinu v'shadrei kitone v'gadlinu nishba. I would plant flax and then make nets out of them, trapping nets out of these flax. From, I'll start from scratch. Tave, and I will catch deer and, and slaughter them. Umachinum Bisrael Yasme and give their flesh the, the meat to orphans. And what do I do with the hide? Barichna Megilta. And I will make from their from the hides of the deer a, a parchment, Uksavne Khamisha Khumshin. Then I'll write down the Khumish. And I would go to the city. And I'll teach each of the five five boys, take just five boys in the classroom, and each one teach them one part of the Chumash. One will learn one Sefer Chbreshis, one will learn Shmais, one will learn Vayikra by Midwood Varm. And for other five boys, I'll teach them Shisha Sidre Mishnah. And then I would have the children learn with each other. Each one teach whatever he knows to somebody else. Until I come back, learn with each other, teach each other, and teach Mishnayas to each other. And I'll make sure that Torah will never be forgotten from the Israel. And that's the way it is, because if you make the kids themselves become teachers and teach other kids something they don't know, they, they will never forget their learning. That's what Rebbe said. How great is my Sechia? 
Another two minutes and then we stop. Amalei Rab Shmuel Rab Yosi. Afilu Memar isn't isn't is Rab is Rab is is he greater than you? Amalei and he's great. Amalei Afilu Abba. Amalei Chatzur Shalom Leitik Kizayis Misrab. He is not as great as Rab Shmuel Rab Yosi as as Rab Yosi. Amalei. Okay, one more thing. Am Rab Zera. Rab Zera said, "Ms Nira Li." Last night, Rab Yosi Bar Chinin. I saw Rab Yosi in a dream. And I said to him, in, in the future world, in Olam Haba, who are you sitting next to? Amali, he said to me, Rabbi I'm sitting next to Rabbi Yochanan. And Rabbi Yochanan, me, who's sitting next to Rabbi Yochanan? He's sitting next to Rabbi Yane. Rabbi Yane, me, who's Rabbi Yane sitting next to? Eitz Rabbi Chinina. Rabbi Chinina, me, who's Rabbi Chinina sitting next to? Eitz Rabbi Chia. Amartila, I said to him, so Rabbi is on top. He's the one that nobody's sitting next to except Rabbi Chinina. So, so Gemara asked, so I said, uh, uh, Rab Zeir said uh, to Rab Yoisi, Rab Yochanan ate Rab Chinina loy. Can Rab Yochanan sit next to Rab Chia? Amali, he said to me, no. Ba'asa de zikik in the nuro bu'ur in the esa man ma'ayim ba'na pocha l'tamon in a place with fire sparks and burning fires. Who can bring Rab Yochanan, the son of Napocha, there? In other words, Rab Chia, uh, uh, Rab Chia was so great that Rab Yochanan was not worthy of sitting next to Rab Chia in in the Olam Haba. Abiva, Rab Chiva said, "Mishtakach li ishtoyli Rab Chiva bar Sumurke." Chazal lu al Madrabanim to have a shchiach elio gabe. Rab Chiva said that this Rab Chaviva bar Sumurke saw one one rabbi that Elio Novi used to come to that one rabbi. The Safra Hava Shapira Ene Ulute Damik the Mikle Bedura. His eyes looked beautiful and healthy in the morning. But it appeared to have been burned by fire in the evening. So how did his what happened? Amale, my hi, what happened to you? But Amali he said, the Amile Elio, the Amile Elio. I told my my teacher, Eliyahu Anavi, Achvili Rabonan Kisalkal Msifte Rikia. So show me the rabbis as they're moving around around in the heavenly yeshiva. Amalahu, so he said to me, I'll let you see what's going on upstairs, but Kuli Matsina Listakula Bihu, you can see everybody, Lava, Miguroka, the Rabhia, the Loy Stakal Bahu. You should not look at the chariots. I guess everybody has like their own car upstairs, so to speak. The chariot the Rabhia, as it passes, don't look at it. My Simone, how do I know what's Rabhia's char chariot? So the Gemara says, Whatever you see, whenever the other chariots go, there's other malachim helping the in, the person inside the chariot get off and on the chariot. Levar from the chariot, the 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 He gets out of the chariot by himself. So anyway, he so he saw he sees this one lone ch chariot of Rabchia. And so this rabbi who is looking around what's going on in the heavenly world upstairs, like Motsai like Menaf, he couldn't hold himself back. Is Takulebar. He steered at the chariot of Rabbi Chia. So oh boy, Asitrei Butiti Dinura, two fiery sparks came out. Umaxi Lahugava Visamainela landed, it hit the, this person and blinded his eyes. So now that's why in the morning he had healthy eyes, at night his eyes looked look blurned, burnt. The Mechara says the Gemara, and this will stop. Asli Ishtachim Mara say he 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 prostrated himself on the gravesite in the cave of where Rabchia is buried. Amina, he said, I learned your brises. Rabchia put together the the, the brises of Rabchia, and therefore they were very special. This is pre Gemara, I guess, and 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 so he this Rabbi said, please help me. I learned so much of your teachings. Oh, the uh, star and somehow that rabbi got healed, and he was able to see again. So this is the famous Gemara's Daf Pei Hey. Okay, we shall stop over here. Thank you.